Okay, today I thought I'd do a quick review of my new uh, film scanner. I recently bought this Plastec Optic Film 8200i. I've been using a flatbed for a while. I've been putting quite a lot of 35mm film for it and it wasn't, it wasn't coming out well. Uh, I paid about £230 for this, so this isn't some kind of paid advert. I actually just, just bought one myself. I've been using it for about two weeks, but I thought I'd package it up again so that you guys can see how it comes in the box. This thing is, it's, it looks very big from this box. It's not, it's tiny, but it does a very good job, and I'm really happy with it. Uh, let's crack on. Um, let's open this up, and I'll show you what's inside. Okay, so you've paid £230. So let's see what you get. A couple of instruction manuals. Hold up a slide film mounted in the plastic holders. That's for cut 35mm film strips. We've got a charging cable. They've, uh, they've also thoughtfully included a European plug adapter. I doubt I'm going to get much use out of that, but it's there. And um, my charging cable is currently tangled to the USB 3 laptop connector. So there's all my cabling in one mass. They also give you a CD containing Silverfast SE Plus. This is a big step up from the Plustech supplied um, software. So you want to keep hold of that. It comes with the license on the front, so maybe I shouldn't show you mine. Here's a carrying case. I doubt I'm ever going to use that. And then that's all the accessories. The scanner itself comes well packaged in these foam supports. I guess it's not the kind of thing you want to knock about in transit. So yeah, there's the scanner. I'm just dropping my silica gel on the floor. Um, it's not very big, but it's, um, it's only really taking these frames that only hold six negatives at a time. Here's a, uh, a, an SLR for scale. It looks small, but that's great because you set it up on your desk, it sits in the corner, and uh, you're, you're only loading it like, uh, like this. You're just passing negatives through from the side, so the depth of it doesn't really matter. I've, um, I've just downgraded from an Epson V850, which is about this big, so it's, uh, it's a blessing for me. But I'm going to get it set up with my computer, and I'll show you some, some sample scans. I might have to link to those images because YouTube's going to compress the hell out of them. But, yeah, let's get this guy um, loaded up with my laptop. Alright, I'm going to quickly show you guys how to load a, um, a, a strip of negatives into this holder here. Now this holder can take up to six. And they just lie, there's no glass in either side. They just lie across the top and are held closed by this as they pass through the machine. Here I've got some black and white, so let's take one of these out. But before I do that, I'm going to put some gloves on. This is good practice for any scanning because skin oils and dust can just get on absolutely everything, which can mess up your scanner and you can get fingerprints and such on your actual um, scans afterwards. So here we go. Let's start with black and white. So these are colour. I'll put those out of the way. And keep your frame open. to hold these by the sides so that even with the gloves there's no risk of anything getting onto the frame. And what I'm going to do is just use this um, air blower. These things are really cheap, they're about three or four pounds on Amazon. And just blow anything you can see on the negative off. Now if you can't see anything on it, it's probably a good idea to do it anyway because tiny bits of dust can still come up on your scan. And what you're trying to do when you lay it in is line up the gaps between the frames with the, uh, the plastic crossbars here. So I think I'm pretty well lined up. Just takes a second. You can see how much easier it is when you wear gloves because you're able to actually touch the, the strip whilst you're loading it. Okay. I think I'm just going to scan this negative right at the end. So, 
give him a good dust off. It's probably a good idea to keep dust out of the machine as well. So I've just gone over the, uh, the frame itself that he can go in. And what you'll feel is a, is a click, or you're going to hear it on the microphone, hopefully. That sound is the first negative dropping into place. There are these sort of stops, detents, along the frame so that you know that the, the scan head is lined up over the negative. Okay, so he's loaded. I'll turn him on like this. Now, I never use either of these buttons because I think they relate to the Plustech software. So I'm not too worried about what those do. My next step is to take the computer and open up Silverfast. I think I'll now cut to screen recording. Okay, so when you open up Silverfast, this is the kind of screen you'll be greeted with. Now, I have got this black screen here, which is where my image will appear once I pre-scan. So if I go ahead and click pre-scan now, the scanner will do a low-res pass and my image will appear. Here we go, looks a little bit overexposed. And there we go. Now, the scanner has done a little bit of thinking and it's worked out that I'm setting my exposure around here. I think that's actually pretty accurate. Now, I can set my frame lines. You see I'm cropping it slightly, but that should be enough. Now, I'm set to transparency, negative, and in this option, I select 16-bit raw. You can select 16 to 8-bit, but what that will do is it will give the scanner free reign over a whole host of options. At the moment, what I'm doing is scanning raw, and I'm doing most of the, the sort of image reversal and sharpening and such in Photoshop afterwards. I find that much easier. So here we go, I've set my, my file name, Basket Dog, and uh, I'm just gonna set this to my desktop because it's just for the video. And then I scan at the highest resolution. Now, the scanner itself doesn't really do 72,000 PPI. It's rated at around 3,800, 3,500 or so. But what you can do is you scan at the highest resolution and then you reset the image size in Photoshop and it trims out some of the duplicated pixels and also it cuts down your file size a bit. You can see that's about 130 megabytes. Okay, one setting panel that does have effect even on the raw image is this one here, Megafix. Now I've set my film type as Kodak Tmax 400, that's what I shot it on, but I can also set this exposure level depending on how I want my scene metered. Now if you look here, I've just overexposed it by three stops. That means the scanner will take longer to scan and it will sort of leave the backlight behind it for longer so that it can pick up more detail in the shadow areas. But you can see the effect it's having on the highlights. It, it doesn't look quite as good as it did before. Same, uh, same thing happens, I can underexpose it. You can see I'm recovering a little bit of detail, but I am losing some of the shadow detail. So let's just go ahead, I can type this in myself, set it straight to zero, there we go. This tolerance is for the orange mask. Uh, this isn't color negative film, so I don't need to worry about that. Yeah, here we go. Now I can scan it, and I start that, and it will, uh, it will appear on my desktop when it's done. Okay, I did speed this section up a little bit, just uh, in the interest of not boring you guys too much, but it took around three minutes and 20 seconds for the whole scan. It's quite a while, but I'm willing to put up with that because I think the image quality is worth it. Hmm, I've been processing for a while now, but I'm going to go have a look at my desktop and I'll see when it arrives. Here we go, so it will be saved when I go back on the software, that was well timed. Let's have a quick look at this file in Photoshop then. Okay, I just did my standard image reversal. I use a plugin called Color Perfect, that's what I'm doing now. And I just adjust my curves, I adjust my levels, and I do a little bit of unshut masking just to get that minute extra detail out of it. 
you can see the dog, you can see he's got quite a lot of detail, you can see the texture and the fur, he's got his whiskers, I'm getting some of the dust out. Now this is dry scanning and all dry scanning has dust. I don't believe it's possible unless you live in some kind of sealed laboratory, not to have any dust. Even then you'd probably get um, dry skin falling off people and stuff like that will eventually ruin your dust-free laboratory. But yeah, don't want to be too obsessive with it. Dog looks good and this is, uh, this is me just resizing the image so that it's not the bloated file I originally scanned using Bicubic Sharper, you can use Bicubic Smoother and you probably shouldn't use Nearest Neighbor. So there we go, I've downsized the image and I'm probably just gonna export that as a quick JPEG for the video. And you can see that JPEG in three, two, one, now. I'll put a link to this image up on my website in the description of this video because I don't feel that YouTube itself can actually give you a sense of the detail and sharpness, but I hope you agree that it looks pretty good for 35mm, especially when you consider it was scanned at home in under 10 minutes. Okay, so that was quite a quick run through of how it is to scan. I mean, it did take a couple of minutes to go through the single negative, but it's really important with 35mm to get as much detail out of the smaller negatives. Uh, with medium format flatbeds, uh, just about all right, they can handle it. It's better to get a dedicated medium format scanner, but they do a pretty good job. I've, um, I've just scanned my one strip negatives and I've got a, a pretty, um, pretty usable image out of it. Now I had previously scanned the same one on my flatbed and I can tell you this one is significantly sharper. You do, um, you do have to wait a bit and you do have to go through the kind of manual process of aligning each frame by pushing them through the machine. But it's, it's relatively stress free and it does give you a, a significant jump up on the whole flatbed loading procedure. Um, Silverfast is just about required and the SE version of the H200i is actually called that because of the included Silverfast bundle. Now you can buy this scanner without Silverfast for 80 to 100 pounds less. I think it's marketed as just the H200i but it's um, it's probably worth investing in the software as well. If you were to buy it without software and then later upgrade, it would definitely cost you more. So getting that um, software license with it's a good idea. Apart from that, the only other thing you'd need is the, um, the dust blower. He's super helpful and um, you can't really dry scan without one of these. You just have dust everywhere. And then the, the gloves, you can use those, but they're, um, just the kind of quality of mic improvement you can probably get by without them yeah um that just about wraps it up i mean i i strongly recommend anyone thinking of getting a scanner just for 35 mil to try out the um the 8200i and um and i wish anyone trying it all the best it's uh, it's a bit of a learning process but as is all scanning and um i hope that you can get uh, decent results get something you're happy with out of it Thanks for watching.